Good morning. So we have completed the secluded tower scene, the train scene. We're done with camera animation. Now we're getting into bullet physics. Bullet physics is going to happen first because it's the engine behind physical simulation of rigid body effects and some soft body effects uh, that the MASH networks system uses. So I want to use those things in the MASH networks, but for us to better understand where they come from and what they're doing we're going to start off by going through a series of small animations using bullet physics and <clears throat> this is really useful for us in getting into our mind how these systems work so we're going to do this in one session so let's get started i've provided a list underneath our bullet physics so if we could jump to that in the shared notes it's somewhere near the middle up here underneath the uh, dynamics yeah right here if you could just scroll up a little bit and look at this instruction that the plugins to enable go to windows settings preferences plugin manager and I give you a list of all of these plugins that should be turned on all right if for some reason any of those are not turned on you should turn them on and again that's here windows settings and plugin manager and you're looking for bullet.mll that's really what we need for today and there is a couple of other ones like abc bullet we can load load and auto load that if it's not turned on um, and you can look for the list for yourself. But today it's really bullet.mll. You can refresh and close that. So now we're ready to go. Then the first thing in our list of animations is to create a single object, a sphere, dropping onto a static plane. Now, I get questions from the students, which of these is the one that you're going to show at the end of the semester? It's, it's really all of these, and they're all going to happen pretty quick. They're all small, and they build on each other. So we're going to demonstrate one, go to the next, which builds on the previous, go to the next, which builds on the previous, and we'll do them all here in this same session. So let's start with the first one. Drop a single sphere onto a static plane. So first, let's get our polyplane, and I'll just tear this menu off for a sphere and a polyplane. So with the polyplane selected, go to your effects menu set, go to bullet, and you could tear this off as well. We could take a look at that menu, just tuck them down here. Then choose the, with the polyplane selected, choose passive rigid body option box. And then in here, choose the poly plane as the option. So the collider shape type should be plane. The axis is the Y axis and it's a static body and then hit apply. Everything else can stay the same and then hit apply. And you see we get a new object called the bullet solver. And if we can take a look at the bullet solver in the attribute editor, control A, and you can see that the bullet solver has both transformation data and it has simulation data, which is basically when does it start? Is it turned on? Um, do we accelerate it using CPU or GPU? Um, what is the frame rate going to have? Um, how many iterations? Basically, how accurate should we have it? Uh, do we have a ground plane that's uh, like a virtual ground plane? It's always at Y0. The ground plane is always at Y0. But we're going to create our own ground plane, so we'll keep that unchecked. And then use Maya fields this actually specifically points to these fields and solvers air drag gravity so on and so on and so on i don't intend to explore those but you should know that's where they are and that's what use maya fields is talking about we'll leave that off we're only going to work with gravity and we have a couple basic things wind magnitude which is basically blowing this way or that way at a certain intensity and then we can change the direction of which way it blows with this vector so it's a very very simple basic field for simulating we're going to work with that and then whether or not we can display the solver's bounding box its center of mass its collision shape its constraints or its contact points 
And then we have a couple of things called collision filters. We will not mess with those. And then basic parameters that you would find on any object in Maya, object display and node behavior. So it's really this stuff right up here that we're paying attention to in the bullet solver. Next is the sphere. So select the sphere and choose active rigid body option box. And we choose the collision shaped of sphere and the axis is again the Y axis. And the body type is dynamic. So this is the one that will be actively moving. Again, change nothing else and hit apply. Now, um, the only thing that I did wrong here, and I just did one little error, is that I really want the ball to drop onto it as the instructions in our shared notes say, so drop a single sphere. So what I'm gonna do is strip the sphere of the bullet by removing the bullet from this selection. And then I'm gonna move the sphere up. So if you make a mistake, you can remove the bullet from that selection, modify where it needs to be, and then you can apply the same settings again, sphere, Y, dynamic, and again, apply. So that correctly fixes that. And now you have a way of fixing it. We'll do some of that here and there as I will make mistakes too. So before we actually hit play, before you hit play, go to your running man icon. It's going to be under your frame range. It's probably at the bottom of your Maya, unless you changed your Maya to look like mine. Go to this running man icon and go down to playback and change playback to play every frame. In order for us to see dynamics accurately, we need to play every single frame, calculate every single frame. But then because some CPUs are faster than other CPUs and it's going to play back insanely fast. So what we want to do is slow it down to 24 frames per second. So it will calculate every frame, but we'll slow it down visually to be 24 frames a second and then hit save. So now when you play, it will drop at a rate that's 24 frames a second and make contact with that polygon plane. So we just drop it and it makes contact and does a little, a little bounce. Okay, and that's it. So that's number one. It's that easy. Now, we can make this a little bit more interesting, and I think that we should make this a little bit more interesting. And so this is going to be in your video instruction. I didn't type this part out. Um, what we're going to do is remove the bullet one more time from this selection. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of visual interest. We're going to add a material to the ball, and it's going to be a Maya surface it's going to be a actually let's do an arnold shader let's do that we always do this one and then under color click this little checker icon go to 2d texture i know this is not a texturing class but bear with me it's worth it ramp and then inside the ramp set this to none and what you get is put your cursor over the view over here and press six on your keyboard you get a black and white texture on the ball you see and i can change where this happens so i'll change this to 50 percent and we can add a key maybe at 0.25 percent and we could add a key here maybe at 0.75 percent and we can change i didn't mean to hit the x there we can change the colors of that key to whatever color we want it to be. Like so, so that you have stripes on the ball. You can also go to the place to texture node here and increase the repetition to something like four by four. And so now we have stripes on the ball. And of course, you can change the direction of the ramp to be U or V. So now it looks a little bit more like a beach ball. Okay, so this will give us something to see as it's dropping, specifically when we want to visualize rotation. So rotation is really hard to see without some texture. And since we're here and we're thinking about texture, let's drop something onto this plane. Again, let's go to add a new material. Again, an Arnold AI standard surface. And again, go to color, the checkerbox icon. 
again 2d texture this time choose the checker icon and then you can again you can go to place 2d texture and you can increase the repetition maybe 10 by 10 to just add a little bit of a pattern to that and of course you could texture it with whatever, whatever you want but i think this at least allows us to see contacts and to make a little bit more interest and another thing that we can do just as a bonus is we can add as a bonus and this just makes things a little bit easier to see we can add a direct standard maya directional light and press number seven on our keyboard and then rotate this light so that it's pointing downward and then we can go to our lighting menu in our viewport and turn on shadows and so this gives us uh, a shadow as it's dropping and then as a as a special bonus to just to play around we'll add an ambient light and we'll set that ambient light press control a set that ambient light to an intensity of something like 0.5 or maybe 0.25 and you can see that that brightens up the scene we still have a little bit of light and we still have a shadow and we can take those two lights <clears throat> and we can put them onto their own display layer and set the display layer to reference so we can't select the lights we can even name the layer to lights and then most especially as we learned before turn off the playback so that when we're playing the lights are hidden or you can just hide the lights like that but you can see that actually hides the effect of the light so that's not quite what I want so we just want to hide the light during playback okay so now when we run the next simulation we'll have we'll, we'll be able to see the rotation so if you want to see that last one again with rotation we'll select the object active rigid body again same settings deselect and when we play it the ball will activate and we can see that there's little to no rotation all right and this is really good evidence that in a single simulation dropping onto a static object that's perfectly aligned to the world nothing much happens okay now on to the next one drop a single sphere onto a static mesh a bent plane okay static mesh see the difference the keyword static plane static mesh okay so here's the difference Here's the difference. Let's go back to frame one. Again, remove the bullet from this selection. So you actually have to remove the passive. Let's get those lights out of the way. And then what we're gonna do is take, I know, I know, I'm making you model now, but you're going to switch to vertex, tag these vertices, and you're going to rotate them. Hold D for dog and pick a point in the middle and then rotate that up and then go back to object mode turn on rotation and rotate it back okay so it's going to kind of like scoop up it's going to scoop up the object as it drops right we can even move it to the side a little bit so that it will hit not dead center but hit and then kind of move over a little bit okay so let's try that so again this is for number two or on number two drop a single sphere onto a static mesh static mesh part okay so the static mesh part is this it's a passive rigid body except except it's a static mesh and it is a static body but static mesh meaning that as the mesh changes shape it will actually intersect those components so we'll hit apply and we'll rewind and uh, hit play and now we see the rotation now if you really want to see those dynamics play out you want to see them like you know extend out for a while i highly recommend that we set our dynamics as far reaching as 1000 so set this to a thousand frames and watch it play out and we can see it kind of dipping to the other side and it as it comes to finally to a rest okay so that's that's the idea so i'll rewind let's go on to number three you see how easy that was drop many spheres as a rigid set 
okay, as a rigid set onto the bent plane. Drop many spheres as a rigid set onto the bent plane. Okay, so let's use our existing sphere. Again, remove it from the bullet, remove bullet from this selection. This time, let's start to the side a little bit. And I'll duplicate it, Control D, move it to the side, Shift D, that'll produce a couple more. And again, let's just move that to the side a little bit. Control D, like so. And let's see what we get here. So I'm going to take all eight spheres and create a rigid set. Now this is how we get many, many parts to function together when we use the bullet system. Apart from, we'll see this again in the MASH networks. It's going to be very sophisticated in the MASH networks. But here, this is how we set it up as a rigid set. And there are very simple options in the rigid body. Um, the big important one is the name of it. This is the bullet rigid set. And so we'll see in the next a future lesson, a future example of changing that name. But for now, go with the default. And then again, rewind and hit play and see what happens. And so there we go. Now we've got all of them interacting on the same plane. Now, if we if if you if you want to play with this, you could uh, remove the bullet system. And oh, actually, before we do that, actually, before I explain playing with it, let me see and sh show you a couple pieces of what happened here. Notice notice something special here. If I select the spheres now, it's all one unified object. You see, right there. See all the spheres that were there originally are now hidden from one through eight one through eight they're all hidden but now they're all combined into a single set i found something interesting about this is if you wanted to add more to the set you could take the ones that are hidden duplicate them even move them up shift h to show them control h to hide them rewind and play and it actually adds more spheres to the the rigid set i thought that was interesting that i could add more to the rigid set simply by duplicating what was originally in there so this object basically becomes all of those uh pieces so i thought that was interesting um and i could let's see if i can break it like delete them I'm running an experiment right now. Yeah, so I can just strip them away, delete them, and the rigid body set is still there. Now, if you wanted to change the size of the spheres, this is not in my list, but if you wanted to play and you wanted to change the size of the spheres, I recommend that you remove it from, re remove from the bullet the, um, I'm sorry, remove, yeah, there we go. So make sure you select them here in the outliner. Remove bullet from selection. So now they're removed. Press Shift H to see them. If you wanted to make, say, one more, and that one was smaller, and when we scale it, be, be, be mindful of this number right here. This is not in my animation list. I'm going on a tangent. Be mindful of this number right here because it's going to have an impact on the dynamics. So what you do is you, is you freeze not the translation, not the rotation. Freeze the scale. There you go. And now we can add all of these to the rigid body set. Same default setting, so just run it again. And now when we rewind and play, we have that little guy bouncing around on top. Okay, and we can, ex we can inspect the bullet solver a little further. Okay, we're still on number three. We're still there on number three. We can inspect the bullet solver a little bit more and see that we have something added. Now that we're using a rigid set, we have a bullet rigid set initial state. The initial state has new properties in it, such as mass, dampening, angular dampening, friction, restitution. And I have a definition of restitution. It's right here. Restitution is the bounciness of the rigid body set. Restitution is the bounciness of the, of the set. And then I have initial conditions, which we're going to play with some of this. Never sleeping, initially sleeping, its initial velocity, its initial angular velocity, 
and whether they're gluing and whether they're tied together. And of course the collision shape. So we need to change collision shape to sphere. And again, we rewind, hit play, and we're gonna get a much more dynamic solution. There we go. Now they're acting like spheres. I just forgot about that. I'm glad I went through this list. The collision shape, now they're acting like spheres. That's Again, this is special. This tab shows up with the rigid body set. Quite nice. All right. We can even set an angular velocity, which is just a, a, or initial velocity. So we can say, maybe we want them to spring upwards a little bit before they fall. So we could give initial velocity on the y-axis 10. They'll bounce up, then they'll come down, you see. Or we want to go a little left or a little right. We could add a little velocity on the x-axis or the z-axis. And there we go. Some of them just fell off into infinity. And they do. They do fall into infinity. And they will calculate falling for the rest of the 1,000 frames. So this can get expensive. Sometimes it's good to have a trap that's kind of like a hidden trap that's not too far below. And you can trap it. Or you can at least... Anyway, so just an idea that they are falling forever as long as this is calculating. So again, we'll rewind. We'll set initial velocity to zero and back to zero. Angular rotation. Again, we could set rotation to something other than zero. And they just start to freak out. I think 30 was crazy. Let's try one. There we go. So one seemed sufficient. Maybe five. And we'll rewind and try again. Boom. So they're spinning on their y-axis and they kind of twist and grind pushing each other okay so now you're getting some idea of how to play by this point you're playing with dynamics I don't have to tell you to do it I've just given you a few buttons you can play with and now you're playing with it uh, and since we're here and since we're working with bouncing balls let's change restitution to one and change this rotation back to one and notice that little sphere just pop right up. So again, restitution was basically its bounciness. If you want it to, to appear heavy, if you want it to appear heavy, reduce the restitution, rewind, hit play. Notice I have to hit rewind and hit play every single time. In order to recalculate the simulation, you rewind and let it play from the beginning and it will recalculate. Okay, and if you if you want to see the object, if you, if you want to see the, the bullet solver in the attribute editor, but not have the object selected, we learned this trick. I don't know if it was this class or my other one, but click on copy tab and then deselect. And now you can see the properties, but not have the objects selected as you're testing and playing with it. Okay. There we go. So that's number three. Number four, shatter the ball. Okay, so that's that's a key word, shatter. And then uh, shatter, shatter immediately. So sh we're going to shatter the ball. So we're going to shatter immediately, which basically is key word there is it's going to uh, explode. So let's look at that. All right, we'll remove this. And and by the way, because this is an animations list, your it, it's in your best interest to save a copy of what you're doing. So from this point on, I'm going to save a version f number three, number four, number five. I'm going to save this as bullet wrong class. bullet and this is number three bullet many many spheres or just rigid set rigid set that sounds good
And why not? Let's put a version number on it. Version 1. Number 3, version 1. There we go. Now, now I feel good. And I put it in the wrong spot. Of course. Of course I did. Okay. Okay, good. Now I'll just do I'll just do a save as that's Control Shift S every time I want to save out another version. All right. So next I will take all of these spheres, yes, and remove them from the selection. Good. And unhide them. Good. And then I will delete everything except one. And let's frame up and focus on this. Now what we want to do is shatter this thing. Shatter is under the effects menu set. It is an effect and it's here. Be very careful on what I do next uh, and follow it carefully. So I don't want to overdo this. So I want to, first I'll reset this. I want to do a solid shatter. I want no more than 10 pieces. And I want to... Keep the interior polygons, triangulate the surface, apply an interior material, and the original surface we'll do nothing with right now. I think that's good. So just 10 is what I want to change. And oh, oh. And if the construction history of the sphere is not deleted, this will not work. So go to edit, delete by type, history. I don't have any on mine right now, but just in case you do then delete that history. All right, now you can run it. And it creates a new group with shards in that group. We can hide the original sphere, control H, and we can see the individual shard. If I take that shard and move it to the side, you can see it applied a material on the interior and it broke it apart into these individual pieces. Now I'm gonna select all of those pieces and apply the rigid body set, rigid set, one more time. Now, if I do nothing with this rigid set and hit play, it will explode. And there you go. You've got your exploding fractured uh, ball. That solves number, that solves number 4A. Okay, three animations here, 4A. So it explodes. Congratulations, you got it right. Next, we're going to shatter upon impact with the floor all right so we'll use the same bent floor so i'll rewind this time underneath the bullets solver control a we're looking for the bullet rigid set bullet rigid set initial state we want to have uh initially sleeping and we want collision type to be hull H-U-L-L, -L, which is just another way of saying actual shape. And then I want my collision margin to be smaller, 0 0.01 should do. And let me check this other side, make sure I got everything. It's possible I'll want more iterations to make it more accurate, but I'll leave it alone. And let's see what we get. Rewind, hit play. So it's initially sleeping, meaning that something has to happen in order to go. So initially sleeping isn't what I wanted. That's our next one. Initially sleeping isn't what I wanted. What I want, oh, that's what I want. Glue shapes. So this is the threshold of how much impact has to happen before they break apart. There we go, that's what I wanted. That's, that's shattering upon impact. That's the glue shapes. I'll make a note of it here. Get the keyword. Good. All right, and that's it. Glue shapes. Now, the quality of how it glues is entirely dependent on um, mass and and friction and restitution. Um, perhaps we have a higher mass. So let's set that to ten. Perhaps we have 
a lower threshold I'm breaking. It just comes comes apart. Perhaps we have um, perhaps yeah, perhaps we have a higher linear dampening, which basically means it won't slide around as much. So it kind of sticks to the surface. And then angular dampening means it just won't rotate very much. They seem stickier, heavier. And then mass, we could increase to something ridiculous like 100 and see how that presses things down a little harder. And then constraints per body. Constraints per body is saying like how many how many uh, hidden sinews are holding this thing together? So we could we could have ten constraints per body to attempt to hold it together, and then we can exaggerate that breaking distance by increasing it or decreasing it, getting them to stick together. So we could we could quickly begin to design a way where it is um, where it is starting to look like a chunk of concrete. All right, so that's where we're going to go next. On the next one is shatter when struck by a kinetic rigid body. So this is your ballistics demonstration for those of you who want to send a ballistics into a situation and then pop or break something. So your ballistics would be okay. We'll keep we'll keep the gluing, except this time we turn on sleeping and use initial sleeping. There's your keyword. So we're still gluing. We're still got the same settings, except this time we're sleeping, and we're going to add. Let's turn that off. We're going to add something else. We'll add a oh there it is. We'll add a cube. And what we're going to do is keyframe the cube traveling through. Now, there's a trick here that I'm going to remember when I do it. And I think the trick is to keyframe it. After applying the dynamic. Let me see if I remembered that correctly. So I'm going to set this to be an active rigid body. The The collider shape is box. And it will be a kinetic rigid body. Apply. And then I'm going to key it where it is. At frame 100. Pass it through and key it again rewind and let's make sure the ball is make sure the ball is sleeping I was right I'm glad I remembered that so you set just rewind me and see it again. So you set the kinematic first, then you keyframe it, then it will interact properly. So this is how you key in your, I got a very slow ballistics here, but if you wanted to see something come along and hit something else and have an effect on it, set the kinematic body first, then keyframe it. All right. <clears throat> and it's pushing it quite far um, and I can and I can speed that up by the way um, it's in the keyframes of this object right so if we want to make this more intense take these keys and move them back so that it happens faster you see rewind hit play so now it's pushing it 
way off target. But yeah, way, way out there. Okay. So then you would simply move your collision plane, increase it, or add another collision plane. Like you could add another uh, you could add another poly plane or or just for cheap effects, you could add the ground, right? That's in the bullet solver. You could just quickly add the virtual ground. And that way at least they'll land they land on the ground. Like that. There you go. And that should be sufficient. And you can re you can redesign this animation to look cooler by setting up your scenario. Okay, that solves shatter number four C for our third animation there. Okay, next one is drop a single ball falling rolling onto a complex passive body. That's where one is static, a static plane, and one is a static mesh. So either use an active rigid body or a rigid set for the ball. All right, let's try that one. And I'll save this one as number four C. And if for some reason you forget to save it out individually, um, no worries. These are short enough you can see you can build them up again real quick. All right, let's go to the next one. Number five, that one. So this requires two pieces. So let's remove, go back to frame one. Let's remove the box from the bullet. Let's remove the sphere from bullet and let's remove the shattered object from bullet and we can just hide that shattered object and let's go back to the original sphere all right and we don't need this box we'll hide that all right so this is the original sphere and again what are we doing it is dropping a subtle difference here the static plane is an infinite cl collision plane all right yeah so <clears throat> if we have say a did I say one is curved? I'm not sure. I think curve I save for later. But one is static plane, one is static mesh. So let's add a, another poly plane. Where is that? There it is. Right, a poly plane. I had to do something off camera there, but I'm back. So poly plane, and let's just move it up over and rotated slightly all right so we're doing a two types two types of collision here so we've got our passive and i'm just going to uh, you know what i'm going to clear the entire bullet system delete the entire bullet system we're going to set this one to be passive rigid body mesh and then this one is plane. Now, what's not visible here, and maybe I can visualize it in the bullet solver, is the collision shape. Yeah, see, I can visualize it with the bullet solver. See, if I turn on collision shapes, again, I have the bullet solver selected. Notice that the plane is, is infinite, you see. So what's going to happen is the ball is going to drop and we'll set this as we'll set this as a rigid set just a single object rigid set the ball will drop it'll hit that plane and then it's just going to go forever and ever and ever and ever we'll we'll also change the we'll also change the um <clears throat> uh initial state to sphere and yeah, so you see, that's, this tripped up a student uh, a year ago, um, and that's why I wanted to make this a lesson, that if if you have one of these things set to that infinite plane, it's going to keep going until it strikes something else. So what we'll do is rewind, let's, again, remove it, slide it back so that that plane will hit this one and then go back to the the passive and turn on 
uh, yeah, yeah, plane, and turn that back on the plane, and we can see the in the bullet solver. If we look at collision shapes, now it's going to hit that. It's actually pointing at it. And again, we if we take the sphere and reposition it. See here, remove from the bullet system, and then take that sphere. Break, hide that box. Um, there we go. Put push, push this ball back. There we go, and then set the ridges set on it. Yep, and set up the collision state. Sorry, collision shape to sphere. There we go. Yeah. So now, and. Bingo, then it hits that and it, and it just keeps on going. <laughs> and it just keeps on going. All right, so you can set this up to work dynamically in, in the way that you wish, but the purpose of that was to demonstrate that this is an infinite collision plane. All right, kind of a bogus lesson to point something out and you know point my finger at it. Now, the next one, drop a ball onto a complex passive body, both set to static mesh using an active rigid body again the subtle difference from the last one the ball only contacts the polygons of the passive colliders so the ball only contacts the polygons the polygons of the passive colliders okay so let's set them both to be stop rewind and the plane has the bullet switch from switch from plane to mesh and now it should hit it and then immediately drop boom it gets caught by the next one and now we're back to where we were all right so all of that was over set <laughs> too many minutes to say that sorry but that is the point of the lesson all right so that plus that all right now next one add a stack of boxes as another rigid set Make a stack of boxes in front of the ball so that the ball will collide with it. Again, rigid set. This time, enter a new name, ball, rigid, bullet, rigid set, underscore boxes. Okay, so there's a, add a new name. New name. All right, and then set the stack of boxes to initially sleep. Okay, here we go. Same scenario is going to fall. This time, back to frame one. Uh, polycube and <clears throat> let's uh, let's also apply the same material the same existing uh, material that we created the checker box so that we can see its rotation and its changes as it as it falls um, if that's too confusing then I guess you could you know add a new material or maybe that one makes more sense now that one makes more sense so we'll just do the stripes on the box now duplicate it and move it over a little bit shift D select all of that not that one just not that one there we go duplicate it again Shift D, Shift D. And now what we want to do is just hit this thing. So let's take all of these cubes and move them to the point where they'll get struck. Good. Again, make a rigid set. Bullet rigid set options. Add it as a new name. Boxes. Apply. It hides all of that stuff, and we get a new rigid set. So we've got rigid set for sphere, rigid set for the box. And then we set the boxes to sleep. So again, um, the bullet solver, there's only one solver, by the way. <clears throat> and the reason why we use a new name 
for the set is that that set shows up right here as box's initial state. We can set it to sleep and its collision type is box. And rewind and hit play. All right, and they don't go anywhere until they are struck. Notice that the others don't fall because there isn't a sense of um, gravity. We could probably, if we move them closer together, if we kept it really tight and then we used um, glue shapes, we could probably get them to stick together. And I think that's worth a go. Um, so I'm going to take this cube set and remove it from the solver. I'm going to unhide and delete all of them but one. It looks like I got one more. Nope, that's the other one. Yep. Yep, there we go, that one. <clears throat> and then if I if I duplicate it and just keep them really close. Maybe even slightly overlapping. Or at the very, very least, like really, really, really close. I wonder if I can get them to glue together. And then again, that's a rigid set with the box's name. And again, that's in the bullet solver. Box's initial state, initial sleeping, glue the shapes. Let's see if we can get them to stick together and, and come down together. Yeah, that was a lot better. I like that. So it hits it and then they all act together. Okay. Uh, last one. Drop many balls onto, keyword many, onto the complex passive body. Add another rigid set of balls to drop into the box. Restitution is the bounciness. For example, if you are to make billiard balls, set the restitution to a high value and the balls will bounce from each other. Okay. So let's start that by taking my sphere back to frame one and removing it from the bullet and unhiding it. Then I'll take the, yeah, that's good. We can, we can keep that there. That one should probably have the checker pattern on it. Yeah, there we go. That's better. And then we can take this one and again, just move it over to the side a bit, duplicate it a couple of times, maybe, maybe eight of them again, and then take those eight, take those eight and create the rigid set. Make sure it's a different name and then go to the solver for that rigid set initial state that's the boxes where is it is it it's that one rigid yeah that's it that's the one and then set this to sphere and rewind hit play and there we go now we got a whole bunch of stuff crashing into each other one acting on the other and then as i said in the notes if you want them to act a little like uh, like a billiard ball you can increase restitution to something of a high value and now they should pop off of each other a little sharper yep and they pop around a little bit sharper and then if you want to in this final demonstration go to the bullets not that one go to the solver 
shape yeah and turn on the ground so that they don't escape and fall forever and ever and ever yep there we go so that at least they stick around yep and there you have it and then from here you simply play with uh your settings you find out uh, what other possibilities are there now that you have a dynamic system and you've got these complex passive and complex active working together and there's still more to learn there's still more to do and we're only just beginning to do that with our primitive objects this will set us up nicely for working with mash which i'll introduce next class next lecture that is i hope you have a good day and i'll see you in the q a later this week